Good morning, people of God. We like to, it's Pastor Jeremiah. We like to hear the word of God for the the week. But before we do so, let us say a word of prayer. So, in reverence to God, our Heavenly Father, let us bow our head and let us pray. Abba Father, Heavenly Father, we bless you, we glorify you, we exalt you, we elevate you. You, the only true God, the everlasting God, the Almighty God, you will never change. We thank you for your grace and for this any opportunity that you're giving. You're giving unto us to be found in your presence. We thank you for your favor, for your love, for your goodness, for your faith, your grace, O oh God, upon our lives. Thank you, O oh Lord, for everything that you keep on doing, O oh God, in our lives. We come and surrender this time in your hands. The air, the atmosphere, the heaven above us and around us, O oh God, in us, O oh God, we surrender everything into your hand. We stand against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth. We bind it and cast it into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for imparting knowledge, understanding, revelation, insight into our life for your, your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us take our reading from the book of 2 King, Second Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 15. So I read the word of God in the book of 2 Kings chapter 1, chapter 2, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 15. I read the word of God in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 15 in the name of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, No, not thou that the Lord will take away your master from your head today. And he said, Yeah, I know, I know it. Hold your peace, hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord you will take away your master from your head today? And he answered, Here, yeah, I know it. Hold you your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord lives, and as you your soul lives, I will not leave you. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided, either and tighter, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass. When they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I be taken away from you. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so unto you. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces in two pieces he took up also the mantle of elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of jordan and he took the mantle of elijah 
that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, and they said, The spirit of Elijah do, does rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed on themselves to the ground before him. May the Lord bless his word, may it come full of revelation, understanding, life, blessing, and grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Lord wants us to speak today about receiving the double portion of the anointing from God. Receiving the double portion of the anointing from God. The a double portion of the anointing from God is needed in these last days. For the task at hand is great. For in every generation, there is an appropriate anointing needed to deal with the problem troubling that generation. For the anointing comes to break the yoke of the moment. Hence the word the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, and the last part of the verse says, And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing follows a specific nature. It follows a character, it, it follows a particular character, meaning it follows the character of a, a God-fearing person, the character of a person who is fully committed to live his life to do the will of God. This is why when Jesus was in a certain place teaching the people the power of God, in other terms, the anointing of God was there to heal. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town, every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. In the context of this teaching, the anointing refers to a spiritual impartation from God through his Holy Spirit upon a person, thus conferring to such person a divine supernatural enablement to achieve a certain purpose established by God. And after Jesus Christ was baptized with the Holy Spirit, he said the following, Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and covering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are breathed that are breathed to preach the acceptable year of the Lord there are three categories of anointing that God pours upon human beings the kingship anointing the priesthood anointing and the prophetic anointing the kingship anointing an example of the kingship anointing is when God instructed the prophet Samuel to anoint King Saul, King, uh, Saul king over the people of Israel. First Kings chapter nine verse. 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 16 which says about this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin anoint him ruler over the people of the people over my people Israel he, he will deliver them from the land of the Philistines. I have looked on my people for the cry has reached me. Another illustration of the kingship anointing is when King David requested Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet to anoint his son Solomon to be king over the people of Israel. First King chapter 1 verse 34 which says, And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel and blow he with the blow ye with the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. The kingship anointing relates to the political and military aspect of humanity. It, enable, it enables a leader to lead with political efficiency, efficiency effectiveness and to rule with military proficiency and all these will take place under the influence of the holy of the spirit of god the priesthood anointing 
An example of the priesthood anointing is when God instructed Moses to anoint the sons of Aaron as priests. Exodus chapter 40 verse 15. It says, anoint them just as you anointed their father. So they may serve me as priests. The anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue throughout their generation. The priesthood anointing is meant to allow a person to operate in duties whereby he would find himself offering sacrifices unto God on the behalf of others. For instance, in others, this may be, uh, uh, for instance, interceding in prayer for people or fasting for the deliverance of a nation. The third is the prophetic anointing. An example of the prophetic anointing is when God asked the prophet Elijah to anoint Elisha prophet. First King chapter 19 verse 16 which says, And Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou be king, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Meolah shall thou anoint to be prophet in your room. This is why God say in Psalm 105 verse 15, saying, Those shall not and those shall not saying, Touch not my anointed, and do not my prophet no harm. The prophetic anointing enables a person to communicate the will of God in order to bring the, the people to fulfill the, the desires of God. It thus aim at redressing people from evil ways, thus turning them to the ways of God. Hence, to, it unveils to the people who is the true and only God. This is why the word of God says in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10, the last part of it says, For the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of, of prophecy. It also aims at teaching people the ways of God, that they may know them and not depart from them. Also, it aims, the prophetic anointing aims at encouraging people to remain faithful to the ways of God, thus preventing people from losing hope or faith, especially in times of difficulties. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17, which says, all scripture is given by inspiration, although all prophecies, okay, given by God by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Know that every anointing from God will fall in one of these three categories. And as Christian, meaning those who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord, we have been anointed by God even as the word of God states in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21, which says, Now he which establish, which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Jesus Christ said, In the last days evil will increase. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 which says and because iniquity in other words evil shall abound the love of many shall wax cold hence because of the increase of evil in these last days there is a necessity of a double portion of anointing of the anointing from God for the word of God says in Romans chapter 5 verse 20 the last part of the verse which says but where sins abound where sins abounded grace did much more abound in these last days we are experiencing a similar situation as it was in the time of the prophet elijah for in the time of the prophet elijah evil had much increased because of jezebel the wife of king ha who moved the whole land of israel to worship Baha, and whosoever will not do so she would have him killed it was for this reason God, that God asked the prophet Elijah to anoint Elisha as a prophet in replacement of Elijah himself. First King chapter 19 verse 15 to 16 which says, And the Lord said unto him, Go return unto, uh, on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you come, anoint as a, as a hell to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, 
shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Japhat, of Abel Meolah, shalt thou anoint to be king in your room. But Elijah did not only have the prophetic anointing upon him, but he also had the priesthood anointing for in his time, most, if not all, the priests of God were killed by Jezebel or were in hiding for fear of being killed by Jezebel. This is what, one of the reasons Elijah confronted the 400 prophets of Baal on his own. Hence, when God was asking the prophet Elijah to anoint Azahel as king over Syria, Jehu had, Jehu has as king over Israel and Elisha has prophet but also implicitly as priest because Elisha would replace Elijah. Thus God was replacing all three types of anointing with godly types of anointing. God was therefore reestablishing a new godly anointing in the kingship, the priesthood and in the prophetic. And this was necessary to deal with the wickedness of Jezebel, who had turned the people to wicked ways by moving King Ahab, and as well as the people of Israel, of Israel to worship Baal instead of worshiping, worshiping the true God Yahweh. And God went even further than renewing the three types of anointing, for God also moved Elisha to ask a double portion of the anointing that God had placed upon the prophet Elijah. And because in these last days, we are currently living a very similar situation as it was in the time of the prophet Elijah, whereby wickedness has increased much. Hence, God is renewing the three types of anointing in different parts of the world. Of the world, for the word of God says in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 which says the thing that has been it is that which shall be and that which is done it is is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun this implies that God recalled the things that were in all time so that they can be manifest in the current times Hence, by renewing the kingship anointing, God will establish new head of state who will come to fulfill his will. Therefore, new leaders who will come to fulfill his will. And by renewing the priesthood anointing, God will reestablish, God will establish people who will sacrifice themselves by taking time to intercede through much intensive prayers and times of fasting for the will of God to be done in these last days. So Jesus Christ instructed us to ask God in the following, uh, uh, the following when we pray, Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, which says, Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So that's why Jesus wants us to pray that when we pray, we must ask God, let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And by renewing the prophetic anointing, God will establish people who will teach, correct, and direct other people or nations to the right ways of God, causing thus many people to turn away from their wicked ways and accepting Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord, and remaining faithful to God even until the end. And moreover, God wants to wants to release a double portion of his anointing in these last days, even as he did with Elisha. This is why it is important to, uh, to understand what caused Elisha to receive a double portion of the anointing which was upon the prophet Elijah. Elisha, who received a double portion of the anointing of God which was upon the prophet Elijah, manifested a particular attitude toward the prophet Elijah. For he refused to let the prophet Elijah go anywhere on his own, but he followed the prophet Elijah everywhere as described in our main, in our main passage of the scriptures of 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 15. And they took therefore their journey from Gilgal to three respective places, all by instruction of God, even as the prophet Elijah mentioned to Elisha. And these three places are respectively Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan. 
Hence, for one to understand how the double portion of the anointing of God is obtained, we need to unveil the spiritual meaning beyond these four places, Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan. Gilgal. Gilgal is the point of the path of the journey of the prophet Elijah and Elisha to these three respective destinations swifted by God. Yet Gilgal was also the starting point of the conquest of the land of Canaan by the people of Israel during the time of Joshua on the other side of the Jordan. And it was at Gilgal that God asked Joshua to circumcise all the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 5 verse 2 to 3 which says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of, at the, hill of the first kings. These were a new generation of the children of Israel to whom God asked Joshua to circumcise. For God caused the previous generation to die in the wilderness because they did not believe in him. When he asked them to go and possess the land of Canaan, thus disobeying God. Hence, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years while God caused a new generation of the, of the, Israel, of the Israelites to be born in the wilderness. Joshua chapter 5 verse 4 to 6 which says, And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Not all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt them that had not circumcised for the children of israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the lord unto whom the lord swear that he will not show them the land which the, the lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that flows with milk and honey we can see that to deal with the wickedness of the people of Canaan, God raised a new generation of the people of Israel. Hence, God said to the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 4, Speak not thou in your heart after that the Lord your God has cast them out from before you, saying, For my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to do. In, has brought me in to possess this land but for the wickedness of this nation the Lord does drive them out from before you this thus confirms that when God wants to deal with wickedness in a particular point in time he will cause a renewal of the people Thus, Gilgal symbolizes a new beginning. This is why after Joshua finished circumcising the people of Israel, they named the place Gilgal. Joshua chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 which says, And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in, a, in their places in the camp till they were whole. Till, till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from of you, wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Hence, Gilgal represents a place where people need to be circumcised, which implies a new beginning with God. This refers to a person giving his life to Jesus Christ, thus starting a new journey of life with God in Christ Jesus and in the new covenant in which we are now in Jesus Christ it is the physical is not the physical circumcision of the flesh but it is the circumcision of the heart even as the apostle Paul explained in Romans chapter 2 verse 28, 28 to 29 for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the of the heart 
in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. So a true Jew is one who is circumcised of the heart. And as the Jews are descendants of Judah, and knowing that Judah means praise, according to Genesis chapter 29, verse 35, thus those who are circumcised of the heart are the people who praise and worship God in spirit and in truth, even as Jesus Christ mentioned in John chapter 4, verse 24, which says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the circumcision of the heart is whereby the believer takes the firm decision to forsake the things of this world for no one can be attached to the things of the of this world and at the same time follow God faithfully hence the apostle John said in first John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 love not the world neither the things that are in the world for if any man love the world and the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that does the will of god abides forever and the book of james adds james chapter 4 verse 4 which says you adulterers and adulteresses know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of god this is why god said to say the following in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 which says and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed and to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live hence we can understand the reason why Elisha was eager to follow the prophet Elijah in order to eager to follow God for it was God who instructed the prophet Elijah. It is simply because Elisha had his heart circumcised. Thus he was completely attached to God and not to the things of this world. This is, this is what Gilgal represents. So for a person to receive a double portion of the anointing of God, such person needs to be first completely given unto God and not unto the things of the world. Bethel is the next step after Gidgad. Bethel is the next phase which needs to be followed in order to receive a double portion of the anointing of God. Bethel, which means the house of God, is the first place that you need to go in your journey from Gidgad to receive the double portion of the anointing of God. Genesis chapter 28 verse 16 to 19 which says, And Jacob I went out of his I woke out of his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not and he 